Hey, Jay, ignite. Hope you're all well. Most importantly, hope you're trying to stay safe. Um, today's session uh, is, is taken from the Grove Project at the Lotman, but we're now filming it here in the garden, garden room here at BCHA. Um, we're going to be delivering stress management for you today. I just want to just go through quickly the aims and learning objectives of today's session. So by the end of this session, you're going to be able to explore what stress is, you're going to be able to identify how it affects your body, you're going to be able to identify personal triggers, and if we've got time, we're going to explore the M-Wave technique, which is a really good technique. Okay, um, what I'm going to do before I start the session, I'm going to start off with the four stages to freedom. Now, with regards to our stresses that we go through, We've all got to go through four stages in order to complete our stress or get over our stress, alleviate our stress. Okay. So, first and foremost, most people, believe it or not, are actually comfortable with the stress that they're in. And when I say comfortable, I mean that they're used to it. Okay. So then we go through a second stage called the reason stage. I'm sick of being stressed. I need to do something about it. We start to reason and think about our situation. And then I come along and give you some tools and techniques to in order to alleviate your stress. And it puts most people in this uncomfortable situation, sometimes terrifying, because it's uncomfortable, we've never done it before. Once we get emotionally involved in the new information, it no longer becomes uncomfortable, it starts to become positively comfortable. And then we move from this stage here, called super duper freedom. So the first stage is the comfort zone. We're all comfortable with our levels of stress. The second stage is we start to reason and think about our stress in terms of we need to do something about it. Then we get some information, and then that information makes, makes us feel a bit uncomfortable because we're not used to it, because we're so used to being in stress. But when we get positively comfortable with this information, we come to this point here, where we're no longer stressed like we used to be, okay? So just bear that in mind. Don't think to yourself, right, I'm stressed at this moment in time, I'm reading the book, I've got some information, why is it not work for me? We've got to get emotionally involved in it, and it's got to make a shift through the uncomfortable, used to our stress, into the new light, if, if that makes sense, okay? Um, we have a video here that I'm going to show. It's only about three minutes long, but I thought it, it, it's worth showing, just so you can have a look.
Okay, um, if you've got any questions, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to ask them. No questions in it is a silly question. As many questions as you can on um, how you cope with your stress at this moment in time. So, um, what is stress? Now, as far as we're concerned, stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. So, if you've got any questions around your situation at this moment in time and how you deal with stress and is it working for you most importantly, please share them with me and with us and then we can help each other. Okay, how stress affects the body. Now I'm not sure whether you can see on this screen here, but there are, there's, there's a diagram here of a, of, of a body, and then we've got a series of uh, information in terms of how stress usually affects our body. Okay, um, so chronic fatigue. If you suffer from chronic fatigue, um, they, they say that the, the reason why you suffer from chronic fatigue is because there's a root cause of stress going on in that situation. Headaches, dizziness, ADD, anxiety, irritability and anger and panic disorders all has its root cause in stress. Now this is taken from the Institute of Stress, um, the World Institute of Stress. They've covered all this information and put it into this, this one body here. So grinding teeth and tension in the jaw. Do you grind your teeth at night? Or do you know, do you know people who grind their teeth at night? Well, um, if that's the case, the root cause of that is some sort of stress going on there. Increased heart rate, strokes, heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, type 1, type 2, again, has its root cause in stress. Even digestive disorders, upset stomach, uh, IBS, weight gain, obesity, all has its root cause in stress. Further down right at the bottom, we've got muscle tension, fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndrome, and also further down we've got alcoholism, suicide, drug addiction, tobacco and other harmful behaviours from the Institute of the uh, Stress Management Technology. This all has its root cause in some stress. That's what's going on in some people's lives at this moment. Erwin, we've got a question from Sophia. And Sophia's asked, do you think fibromyalgia is related to stress? Yeah, good, good question, Sophia. Um, as it says on the diagram, yes, it says here far, muscle tension and fibromyalgia has its root cause in stress. So I'm not sure whether you've got it or some of you know have got it. Um, the thing to do is to find out how that person lives and lives their lives. If they're living in a stressful situation, then, then yeah, that will be the case. The root cause of it will be some sort of stress going on there, um, Sophia. Thank you. Okay, um, not so long ago, before I got this information on, on stress, I found my situation quite stressful in, in everyday life. Um, and I always put it down to the fact that this is just the way I was, this is the way this, this, this situation was with me. But it's only when I got this information, things started to change and shift in terms of what can I do about it? How can I, how can I get myself in a situation where I'm long, no longer stressed as much as I was? And it was a case of taking on board this information, acting on the information, which is most important and key, and then, and then living your life through that. If, you, if you're in a situation where your job's stressful, your relationships in your environment is quite stressful, then the stress isn't going to go away. What's going to happen is you're just going to get um, more ill in, in the sense of all these things that I've just mentioned. So it's a case of trying to take some responsibility within yourself and say, right, okay then, um, what can I do about my situation, my environment that I'm living in at this moment in time, can I do something about that in order to alleviate my stress? Most people at that point will say, no, I can't do anything about it, but you really can if you really want to. Katie's made a good point. She said that fibromyalgia is 100% related to stress, not being so depressed and stressed and doing more exercise has helped her fibro 10 times more. Who was that, Katie? That was Katie, yeah. Hi, Katie. 
Um, really good point, Matt. Again, it's a case of taking responsibility for our, for our situation and thinking to ourselves, right, what am I doing which, is, which might be creating this? Most people, because they're in the comfort zone of the stress, if you say to most people in that situation, well, it's because of stress and it's because of the things that you're not doing right for yourself, they'll probably say, no, it's not. It's somebody else's fault, it's, you know, and that kind of thing. But it's only when you have to have the honesty of purpose within yourself and say, right, okay, then, what am I doing? How can I, how can I get better? What can I do? What, can, what are the things that I can do? Then things will make a shift for you. And most of the time, it's, it's related. I mean, if you look at the, the fact that we're just slowly coming out of... Um, lockdown most people are stressed through being in lockdown but they can do something about it they can do something about it they can go for some exercise they can get some fresh air they can start to eat well they can start to think about themselves in the situation what, what they're in how, how can they make things better so we can actually do our, our bit and if we can do our bit it'll make our stress a lot easier Smoking, drinking, lack of exercise, wrong thinking, negative thinking, um, wrong environment that we associate ourselves with. All these things have an impact on our stress. So these are the things that we can do ourselves in order to alleviate it. These are the things that we can try and do as opposed to just sitting there, standing there and thinking, well, there's nothing else I can do about my stress and this is, this is, this is the way I'm going to be. This is just the way I am. And it's not the case, we can, we can start taking some responsibility for our own stress by dealing with it and by getting the right information. Alice has made a point, E plus R equals O, what in my power to change? What's in my... Alice has said, E plus R equals O, what's in my power to change? Hi Alice, hope you're, you're alright. Yeah, good point. It's definitely in our power to change things. And if it's a case of understanding that. Once we understand it's in our power to change things, then we can change things. Most people think the opposite way, unfortunately. Most people think that they can't change anything. And, and the life, what they have is all they're going to get. So it's, it's about making that shift in terms of our own mentality to think, okay then, if I can take some responsibility for what I'm going through, then things will start to change a little bit. And if I can take more responsibility, who knows, it can change you know, a lot as well. So, uh, good point, Alice. Keep your questions coming, ladies and gentlemen. No question's a silly question. Alice has mentioned as well about a lack of sleep is a big issue with, uh, that affects stress. Good point, Alice. <clears throat> and the thing is, um, when we go through our day, that, that's the time where we can actually deal with our stress. Because if we don't deal with our stress through the day, rest assured that when we get to sleep at night, we're not going to get to sleep at night because all we're thinking about is the stress that we should have put right during the day. So it's about, for me, it's about having the courage to go and ask someone for help, having the courage to try and deal with that stress during the day and then when we get to when we go to bed at night hopefully we can get to sleep all right. Mm. I think there's a lot of worry about as well at the minute with uh, obviously with the coronavirus and all of that and there's lots of people that I'm seeing that are saying that they're, they're either not sleeping or perhaps they're sleeping and having very odd dreams yeah. things like that the, the stress is actually seeping through that's right. into, the, into the dream state that's right that's right good point Jim. yeah really good point and again, it's, it's, it really is, it comes back to taking responsibility, personal responsibility. And I'm not saying it because, you know, I can deal with my stress. I'm not saying it's easy, it's not easy. But once we get to a point where we can think to ourselves, all right, okay then, what, what things am I watching before I go to bed at night? What things am I eating before I go to bed at night? What things am I thinking before I go to bed at night? Because if I'm not watching the right things, it, which is going to put me in a stressful situation, that's not going to make anything, any, anything better. If I'm not eating well, 
that's not that's not going to make me sleep well so therefore I'm going to be thinking more so it's all again it's all about looking at the things that we currently do within our lives and and trying to make a shift of that and think right okay then that doesn't work for me I need to do something else and try that and the more things we can try the better things will be eventually So just back to the chart here, um, it, it talks about stress affects the entire body and can cause more other problems such as insomnia, somebody mentioned that lack of sleep, um, behavioural problems, immune system dysfunction, asthma, ulcers, lack of energy, depression, nervousness, paranoia, etc. So all these, all these emotional problems that most of us have had or, or are going through at this moment in time all of them has its root cause in stress. So if we can get to the bottom of our stress, it's going to alleviate all these symptoms. Get to the cause of it, the root cause of it, and then the symptoms will go away. Um, but most people, um, what they do, they, they have a symptom of something, and then unfortunately in most cases they'll try and alleviate that symptom with something which is not going to alleviate it, such as drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, that kind of thing, uh, comfort eating, and all that does is just make the situation worse, instead of just having the courage to think, right, okay then, what's going on for me right now, how can I change this, what can I do about it, where can I get some help, get that help, act on the information, and then you'll slowly start to see things changing for the better and transforming for the better. Sophia made a point that she tries to do self-hypnosis before bed and it helps her clear her mind and, uh, and Leah's come in and, and, and agreed with Sophia on that and she finds that yoga is a good way of helping to reduce her stress. Fantastic. And Alice has mentioned that Mark's mindfulness meditation vlogs have helped her fall asleep. So different techniques there. Different techniques and there's lots and lots of... Thank you for that Leah and, and uh, Anna. Alice, sorry. Um, there are a lot of techniques out there for me. Just give them a try. Give them a try. Because if it doesn't work, you can try something else. So I do a lot of yoga as well, and I find that that relaxes me, makes me feel more relaxed. But some people might not like yoga, so they might want to try something else. Might want to watch a, a YouTube clip on something or a talk on something. It just it depends what fits for you. But if it fits for you, just keep using it. So as long as it's positive, um, yeah, keep using it. Going for walks, as it said in the clip, getting some exercise, being out in nature, um, being around situations and people who are going to make you feel relaxed as opposed to make you feel the other way. That, that, can, that can alleviate it. You know, reading a nice book, a, you know, a positive book, that could relax people. Most people that I know read a book before they go to bed, which gets them to sleep. Especially if it's a positive book, gets them to sleep better. Um, and try anything which is obviously going to be have a positive benefit on your body. You can just give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, in my opinion. Find out what works for you. I've got a question for you, for you Erwin, and I hope this isn't something that you're covering sort of later in this. Stop me if it is. But is stress in any way good for you? Is there benefits of it? Good question. I'm, I'm slowly getting to the other way where I'm thinking 95% of the time it's, it's not good for you having stress. 5% yes because you've got to have that adrenaline to, to actually go out and do something and do things and if that makes a person positive in terms of making that effect, a positive effect then, then fine but I tend to go like I say, 95% away from that because I think anything that causes us stress is going to cause us pain. But having said that, if we're mindful of how we're feeling, if we're mindful of how we're being and how we're doing, all right, I'm feeling a bit stressed because I've got to go and go for an interview, so I'm feeling a bit nervous, then fine, that's all right. But if we're not mindful of it, then that stress then will control us. So to answer your question, yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, I remember um, 
years and years ago, and I'm talking from a sport point of view now, whenever I used to watch Mike Tyson in the early days, he always used to say, if he hasn't got fear, he can't fight. And then I think it was when he um, lost his first fight and they interviewed him, and he said, I didn't have any fear, I just thought I'd win. So in that regard, yes, yes, you're right, it, Jeremy, it does, it does work. You've got to have that, right, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to get, get, get through this. But if, you, if it goes the other way, then we're going to be struggling with it. Right, so this is kind of a, a sort of a pivot point with it, of where the amount of stress gets too much yeah. and starts having a detrimental effect on you. Yeah, and only you as an individual will know that. And that's why I would say 95% of the time, just try and alleviate your stress before you get in that situation. Yeah. Because if you're not conscious of being in that state, then it's going to control you. Yeah. So I guess it's, if it's an individual thing, then it's down to the person to start identifying their own warning signs that yeah. it's becoming too much. That's right, that's right. And that's the thing, it's, it's, it's the case of sitting down with ourselves and thinking, right, okay, what are the things that stress me out? And, and what can I do about those things in this moment before it gets too far? Most people, they get stressed and then they try and deal with it. And unfortunately, when you, when you are stressed, it's very hard to get out of that stress when you're in that moment. So it's a case of taking a step back and whatever we've got to do during the day, if it's going to cause us stress and we're thinking about it, I need to go for an interview tomorrow. Um, I need to go somewhere where I really don't want to go. If we can think about it before we go there and think, right, okay, then what can I do? What are the tools and techniques that I can use uh, in order to get myself in that situation where I don't feel like that, then, then all will be well. Alice has mentioned that on reflection she feels it can be a person's perspective that causes more stress, such as catastrophizing, ruminating, and that can keep people stuck in worry. Brilliant point, Alice. As a matter of fact, I was reading something the other day about that in terms of our thoughts, and most, people, most people's thoughts, and I include myself, most people's thoughts are quite negative in terms of where they're at. So, um, we always catastrophize, as you mentioned, Alice. We always make things worse than you know that, that they seem, and then and then it gets to a point where, when we get to do that thing, it's never it's never as big as we thought it was. So it's a case of trying to be in control of our thoughts and thinking to ourselves, right? Is this situation that I'm going to go in? Is it really going to cause me some real anxiety, some real stress? And if it is, what can I do about it before I actually go and do that thing? And just by thinking like that it'll make us feel more relaxed and then we can go in that situation in a more relaxed form and get a, a, you know, a decent result from it, I believe. So it's a case of just being mindful of our being and our doing and our thinking. What am I th why am I thinking like this? Why am I thinking about this situation is gonna go wrong? Why am I thinking anxious thoughts about this situation? Is it a fact that that's gonna happen? Just, just changing that negative self-talk into a positive self-talk will make us feel a lot better and then we can go and do the thing that we need to do. I've, I've actually started walking to work um, because I find driving quite stressful. <laughs> and most people say, well, how do you find it stressful when you've been driving for years? But I just do. And it's only, it's only through that reflection and realisation that I really don't like driving that I've stopped driving to the point where I walk most places. When I need the car, I'll take it. But when I don't, I'll just, I'll just walk. And I find that a lot more um, relaxing and stress less than, than getting in the car and driving. A few extra quid in your pocket and as well. And a few extra quid in your pocket as well, yeah. yeah. But it's just the little things like that about being conscious. Do I really need to drive my car today? Or some people don't like getting on the bus because they feel that, find that a bit stressful. Can I walk it to my destination today as opposed to getting on the bus? Go on, then I'll try it. And if that works, then you're going to feel better. But again, it's about being conscious about how we're thinking. If we're just getting up in the morning, mechanically getting up, what I mean by that is we're just getting up, getting dressed, getting out the door and not even thinking about our state and how, how we're feeling, then we're always going to be stressed. But if we can take some time out to say, right, okay, 
How am I feeling at this moment in time? You know, if this thing that I've got to do today is going to cause me stress, what can I do about it? Can I do anything about it? If I can't do anything about it, I'm just going to have to just do it and relax and do it. If I can, then I need to change it or have the courage to change it. Leah's mentioned stress is very real at the moment for people that are home with children and working at the same time, such as at the kitchen table. Any ideas on how to cope with this? Yeah, um, good question, Leah. I'm finding that at the moment with my little one, to be honest. And what I tend to do, and it works for, it might not work for you, but what I tend to do, whenever I'm feeling irritated, rather than to suppress that irritation around the dinner table, what I will say is, I'm feeling like this, so I'll tell my daughter how I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling angry, or if I'm feeling irritated, or if I'm feeling a bit stressed, I'll tell her how I'm feeling. And by telling her, because people, because not just children, but people can pick up people's energy, people's vibe. So, and children are no different. So therefore, if we can just be honest, have an honesty of purpose about how we're feeling, I'm feeling a bit stressed today, feeling a bit irritable, then, then that person's not gonna think that it's them that's causing it, and then we've released it from ourselves, so we're gonna feel better. So again, it's having the courage to be honest about how you feel. Another, another perhaps good technique, Leah, is uh, if where possible, perhaps uh, you know, children are full of energy, it may be an idea, you know, early in the morning, earlier in the morning, once they've had their breakfast, get them out for a walk, burn off a bit of that energy, and then yourself and the children are perhaps in a more focused yeah. place for you to be working and for them to be doing their, their schooling. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, burn off that bit of energy early on may be an yeah. idea as well. A technique that I used this week was um, Stuart Melbourne, who does our art as relaxation classes, he's done some vlogs on creative creativity and he did one on uh, the Zen Tangle um, the other day and I did that with my little and it was just great just being in that mindful situation while we were doing some colouring just, just for a couple of minutes just just takes that edge off the, the situation and that feeling it just makes people feel a bit more relaxed so it's, a, it's about for me Leah and everyone it's about trying different ways in order to alleviate the stress before it becomes stressful so don't suppress it. Whatever you're feeling, don't suppress it. And if you can go for a walk, if you can do an activity around with the kids and get them involved, then even talk to them about stress. Talk to them about it. Because obviously they're feeling it as well. And, and then, you know, everybody's in the same situation and everybody knows where each other's coming from. Rather than just to try... It's always the case for me, being a, being a parent, we've always got to try and be strong and stuff like that. And I disagree with that. I think we should be more more humility about how we're feeling and then people will understand us more we can understand them more Good point. Alice has mentioned uh, about being open about expectations and also having lots of breaks yes. something that will help Yeah. Good point Alice Good point. being open and honest about how we feel being open and honest about what, what we do and whether we can do something whether we can't do something again being honest about that and again, not suppressing it. And having, yeah, and taking lots of breaks. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to combat stress. Now this is taken from the Heart Maths Attitude Breathing Tool. Now for those of you who've been on the Ignite program, and been to this stress less um, workshop, you've seen the M wave machine that, that I often use. For those who haven't, all it is, it's just a little wire. I think I might have it in my bag, but uh, I'm not sure. It's a little wire that you clip to your ear, and the back of it goes into the computer, and it just gets you to breathe in a feeling about a person, place, or thing that makes you happy. You hold that feeling in, and then you gently release it and then it makes you feel better and then you can then go and do the thing that you need to do. So it says here, several times a day, and um, it says five minutes, but there's been learners on the Ignite program who've done it in two minutes and three minutes, so it's quite easy to, uh, for you to do. Several times a day, take five minutes to follow these simple steps 
adapted from HeartMath's Attitude Breathing Tool. So first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, we focus on our heart, all right? So then we concentrate on a positive feeling or attitude. So if you think of a person, close your eyes, put your hand on your heart, think of a person, place or thing that makes you happy. Breathe that feeling in, hold it for a couple of seconds, and then gently release it. And then once you get adept at this, you can think of different things, different situations that make you feel good, and then breathe that feeling in, okay? And as it says there, uh, when you get adept at it, and like I say, when, when we do it for the first time, it feels a bit uncomfortable, but just putting your hand on your heart, it's quite simple. Closing your eyes, just as simple. Thinking of a person, place, or thing that makes you happy. Breathe that feeling in, hold it for a couple of seconds, and then gently release it. Now, we do that before we go and do anything else. So, in other words, if we're stressed, and then we try and do that, it's likely not, 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 not gonna um, work for us, and that's because we're in that stressful situation. So this is really about, if we know that we're gonna be in, going into a stressful situation, before we go into that situation, if we can think about, okay, going for an interview, going somewhere where you don't want to go, but you have to go, right, put my hand on my heart, close my eyes, think of a person, place, or thing that makes me happy, breathe that feeling in, hold it, and then gently release it, and then we start to feel more calm, and then we can go and do the thing that we need to do. But if we stress and then try and do that, it might well work, but it'll take longer for it to work. So the key is, is it's always a step before. Don't wait until you're stressed to try and combat the stress. Try and combat the stress before you get stressed, if that makes sense. And that's by having to think about how you're feeling. How am I feeling today? How am I feeling at this moment in time? I don't feel too good. Why do I not feel too good? Ah, because of this, because of that. And then we ask ourselves, is this or that a fight? And then just by asking us, uh, ourselves that question, that positive self-talk makes us feel better. And then if we can adopt this, uh, the attitude breathing tool and start to hold, think about a person, place, or thing that makes us happy, then we're gonna feel, we're gonna feel a lot better. So, again, Try it, you've got nothing to lose and you've got everything to gain, just give it a whirl. So before you get stressed, if you know you're going into a stressful situation, sit down somewhere quietly, breathe in, breathe out, put your hand on your heart, close your eyes for more concentration and then think of a person, place or thing that makes you happy. Breathe that feeling in and then go and do the thing that you need to do. And I guarantee you, you'll feel a lot better. Okay, um, some of the, most, of the most important benefits of reducing your stress. Okay, so by reducing our stress, it helps us eliminate unnecessary energy drain. It maintains stored resiliency, so we're more resilient, so we can actually go about our life and do things in a more resilient fashion as opposed to being emotionally defeated about life. Our impatience, irritability, and anger decreases, which is fantastic. It improves physical and mental health. We have greater access to intuition. So when we're stressed, you know, we've heard that saying, I can't think straight. When we're de-stressed, we can start thinking more straight, more clearer. And things that, um, take for example, we'll remember things more. And that's where the intuition comes in. We'll remember to do things. But if our mind's clouded with stress, we're not going to be able to remember anything. And that's the case with most people when they get stressed out. So our memory, our focus, and other brain functions improve. We have more energy during the day so we can do our tasks well. And most importantly and crucially, we have a restful sleep at night. Mm. You know, the more you having stress can impact people's digestion and give, you know, people can have, often have upset stomachs and yes. stuff like that. Yes. Uh, it can help you digest your food and, uh, you, you know, all of that. Yeah, and as it says on, on the how stress affects the body, it does say um, digestive disorders upset stomach. 
Yeah. So it's supposed to be spot on though. IBS. So when so it, it's a case of whenever we're feeling stressed, it always goes around in this part here, around our, our, our tummy area, because we feel that nervous feeling, that nervous tension. But the more we tense, the more it makes our body worse. And it's by being relaxed about the situation, then, then that feeling goes away and then we're all right. But the problem is, when people have these um, ailments, then they go and put something else which sits on top of it, and then that makes it worse. Whereas if they just dealt with that in isolation, then, then all would be well. Alice has mentioned as well that memory can be impacted Yeah. stress. Yeah, that's right. Definitely, definitely. As it says on the... Um, on the on the the, bit of the benefits of reducing stress, the memory and focus and other brain functions improve. Mm -hmm. So when we're stressed, Alice, you're right. Our our uh, memory and focus decreases, but the more we alleviate that stress, it, it starts to improve. We can think of things quite clearly and easily. Because if you think about it, stress just think of stress as a as a as a fog, right? And it's a fog in our system. And when it's foggy, we can't see anything. But once that fog dissipates, then we can see clearly, can't we? We can, we can see for miles in terms of what we've got to do. We can have that situation, that I need to deal with that, I need to deal with this. But when we're stressed, just like when we're in a fog, we can't see anything, we can't function. And you'll feel free. Yeah, yeah. A sense of freedom, sense not of having freedom. all that pressure taken off you. That's right, that's right. And, and most of the time, it's something that we can do, we do for ourselves most of the time. So we don't have to go out and buy something in order to get it right. We can just do it organically by thinking in a certain way about our situation, asking for the right help, and acting on that information when we do get that information, which is crucial. And then all these things we can have in our system. Helps eliminate unnecessary energy drain. You know, I don't know about you, but whenever I was stressed in the past, I used to feel really lethargic and listless and didn't really want to do anything. But thinking, well, I just got up. Why am I feeling like this? And it's because of the mental side of stress, which is causing, which is causing us to, to feel um, have a lack of energy. We don't want to do anything physically and mentally. Can't think straight. Alice has mentioned that with fibromyalgia, you can get the fibro fog, and uh, Sophia's mentioned that yeah, she gets that a lot as well. Fibro fog. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So again, for me, it's all about. First and foremost, being honest with ourselves in terms of how we feel. Are you feeling stressed? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling irritable? Am I feel because irritability, anger, that has its root cause. So there's some stress going on with that individual. So we can get to the root cause of what's making us angry, what's making us irritable, um, what's making us feel sad. Even sadness brings on stress and depression. We can get to the root cause of that and be honest about it, and then go and get some help, or ask for some help. And I keep saying asking for help, because there is help out there. So if, you, if you're feeling a bit isolated at this moment in time, and thinking, well, I've got nobody to help us, give BCH a call, we can help you. Um, there's always help out there, but we need to ask for it initially, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll get that. And yeah, like you said, there's various services out there that can help, you know, that are primarily these Speaking to your doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, speak to your doctor, and your doctor then will, if your doctor can't help you, your doctor will signpost you onto other people that, and other services that can help you. So the key for me is asking the question, having an honesty about how we feel, this is how I'm feeling, going accessing some support, and if that person that you're accessing the support from can't give you any support, he or she will signpost you onto someone who can. So that's the key, is just asking for the help. Keep asking. Keep asking. Which one of those things do you like and what stands out for you, Jamie, on that? In terms of the benefits? The benefits, I think. thinking of mental health I think physical and mental health to be fair I was I was thinking about uh, I think reducing stress and having that sense of freedom it's almost like you're on holiday 
You know when you go on holiday? Yeah. Every, <clears throat> if it's a good holiday, that is. <laughs> everything changes and you sort of become a new person. You're like a new person. You're like uh, when you were younger again. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, all the old hopes and dreams all come back. That's right. That's right. And I think... For me, I think reducing, taking away stress, it's like your whole, you're, back, you're, back, you're on a permanent holiday mm. and everything opens up, those hopes and dreams. Yeah, yeah. that's good I think it. that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Most people that, unfortunately, most people that I know who get stressed, they, they say things like, <clears throat> as you mentioned, things like, well, if I could just go on holiday, my stress will, you know, get better. And, and, you know, the sad thing is, they go on the holiday and then they come back with the stress, right? So my, my attitude is, if, if we can at least start to deal with our stress before we go on holiday, in that example, then when we come back, it won't be as stressful. Because most people are trying to run away from something and, that, and they think that that's what's making them stress. But if they can actually deal with that and then go on holiday, they'll have an absolutely even more phenomenal time in holiday, wouldn't they? Point. Yeah, definitely. You know, so it's a case of just thinking to ourselves, right, okay, yeah, holiday will make me feel relaxed, but I have to come back and then I'll feel stressed. So if I can start to deal with the stress before I go on holiday, when I come back, it'll still feel like I'm on holiday because I'm not stressed or I've not got much stress as I have, you know, previously. And uh, Leah's mentioned, do you think it's hard to show vulnerability for a lot of people? That's a brilliant question. Leah, thank you for asking that. It's a brilliant question. Most people do find it difficult. Unfortunately, I say most people do find it difficult to be vulnerable in, in, in front of people. And that, for me, is what causes the stress and the pain for that individual, in my opinion. Just my opinion, but I think you're right. I think the more we can have some humility about where we're at and how we feel, the more it's going to make us feel better and actually, I believe, through my experience, people empathise with you even more. Because when people think that everybody's or a certain person's alright, then they don't ask that certain person how you're doing. So it's not a conversation that that's going on. But, but the more we can have you, and I don't mean it going overboard with that, you want this is happening for me and that's happening for me. I don't mean it in that regard, and I, I presume you don't mean it like that, Leah. I just mean it in the te terms of, you know, how are you feeling today? I'm not feeling too good. Well, what's going on? Well, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you get into a situation where that person you're asking that question to can help you. It's almost like we call it the alphabet concept, and and it comes in the form of the alphabet. So you've got A, B, C, and D. So A comes in the form of a question: Do you suffer? Now, if you lie about that, not to the person who's asking you the question, if you lie about that to yourself, then you can't go to B, C, or D. So take, for example, Irwin, do you suffer? Yes, I do suffer. Then that person who's asking me that question could say, ah, why don't you go and speak to B, B, C, H, A? Why don't you go and speak to C? This is the advice bureau. But if I lied in that initial question and said I'm all right, when really I'm not, I couldn't have got that help. So, so the more we're honest about how we feel, the moment we've got that humility in terms of, I'm not feeling too great today, I'm really feeling stressed, this is what's going on for me, the more help we're going to get and the more better we're going to feel. And then hopefully that might have a knock on effect for the other person to say, well, I'm not feeling too great either. And then you've got a situation where nobody's trying to be strong in the sense of, I'm all right, but really I'm not all right. So that's a really good question, Lee. Thank you. Hope that makes sense. You know, I think, I can only speak for my age, my age group, we brought up in, a, in, a, in an environment where, you know, to show weakness, well not even weakness, to show a bit of humility, to show a bit of, this is how I'm feeling, it was sneered at, you've just got to be strong and keep going and all that, and I just think, no, we need to go the other way, we need to go the other way, not in terms of being ultra weak, but just being, having that humility to say, look, I'm not feeling too great. Because if, if we are saying, if I say to you, Jerry, you be my manager, I'm all right, I'm all right, and then something happens, and then you could say, well, I thought you said you was all right. 
But if I said, no, I'm not feeling all right, then you could probably give me some help, and then all would be well. And if we can get to that point where most of us are honest about our feelings, and have an honesty of purpose about how we feel in terms of our emotions I'm talking about, in terms of our stresses, then we're gonna get the help and everything's gonna be a lot better than suppressing it. I think sometimes it's about looking at how you're actually dealing with your stress, mm. and are you actually dealing with stress, or are you suppressing the stress? Yeah. Because sometimes we can pull down the shutters, yes. and not let people see, and not let anyone, anything see that we're feeling stressed, and, right. just, and just get on with it. Yeah. And then what can happen is it can seep out, out the side. That's right. And it may be that you know you're, you're leaving work, and you're going home, and you've got to deal with the kids or, or whatever it is, right. and it starts seeping out there. Yeah. Are right. you dealing with it effectively? Is the key thing. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Leah's mentioned is stress the same as anxiety. I think, as it meant, I mentioned in the previous clip, Leah, I think. Anxiety, being anxious, if you think about you, 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 somebody's anxious about something, then you're going to be tense, in my opinion. You're going to be feeling not great. So that will have its root cause in some sort of stress. So I think it's a low level stress anxiety. I think, I think you, you, there's two stages, or there's a few stages. You've got somebody being um, anxious about something, and then if they don't deal with that anxiousness, it gets worse and worse and worse, and then they get stressed, and then the whole thing blows up. So um, I think they're more they're similar, but obviously different in, in terms of in terms of wording. They yeah. are similar. One's short term and one's yeah. long term. Yeah. One, one, one knocks on and leads to the other. Yeah, that's true. Some great questions coming from. Fantastic today. questions. So again, for me, it's about trying to. It's, it's about an individual being emotionally intelligent. That's the key. Emotionally intelligent in the sense of. You know, I'm not feeling too good. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling a bit depressed. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling irritable. These are all emotions that, if we can get intelligent about them and deal with them, our world will be transformed. Honestly, it will be transformed. And everything else that we do will have a result of how we're feeling. So in other words, if, if an individual is stressed and then they go and do a task, how can, you, how can that task be any good when, it's, when you're doing it in stress? We were talking about it yesterday, by the way, about cooking with love. If you have a cooked a meal, irritated, and you know, you're not feeling too great, and then the meal's not like that good, but when you cook it with love, it just, it just tastes a lot better, it looks a lot better. And, 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 you know, and our situation is, is entirely the same in terms of the work that we do. If we're going to work stress, then that means that our work that we do is going to be loaded with stress. It's going to be tainted with stress. And we're not going to be able to do it right. Sophia's mentioned every time that she, express, she expresses that she's stressed, people react harshly. I guess it's down to how, how she expresses herself. But these reactions I get back make me even more stressed. I hear that, um, Sophia. I think, again, it's about taking personal responsibility. So, as an individual, we say to someone that we're not feeling too great, and then if that person then ridicules us for not feeling too great, saying, well, it's your fault, and you know, that's why you've done that, and that's why, then what we've got to do is understand that whatever that person said, if we take that, then, then it's our pain, it's our own pain. So, what, in other words, we can say to someone around us, I'm not feeling too great, and then that person then says, well, it's your own fault, and we can just stop it right there. We don't have to get into a dialogue with that person and say, no, it's not my fault, and I didn't do this, and I didn't do that. We can just say, fine, that's their opinion. But, you know, it's a good question that you raised, Sophia, but, so we've got to get ourselves in a situation where we think, are the people that we're talking to about our problems, if they're gonna come back and ridicule us and blame us for being stressed, take for example, are those the type of people that we need to go and talk to in the first place? My answer would be no. My answer would be no. Go and find someone, and there are people out there, go and find someone that will just be able to listen to you and just acknowledge what you're going through um, and not put it back on you. Because for me, the key is, is to express yourself and you're doing the right thing 
in expressing how you're feeling, but unfortunately the people that you're expressing it to aren't that great because you know they're blaming it on you or you know they make out it's like a short haul instead of just listening to you. And that's the problem that most people have. Most people in the current environment have at least one person who's quite negative in terms of how they feel and so they find it difficult in expressing themselves in front of that person. My answer would be express it in front of someone else. Sometimes it might be the case that the person that you're talking to, they feel stressed themselves. Yeah. And that they just can't take on anyone. They feel that they're taking on somebody else's stress, even just listening to it or acknowledging it or, or being able to find any kind of solution. And they just shut down and don't want to know because yeah. they're, pre perhaps they're too stressed themselves. Yeah. And then, so therefore, Jeremy, it's up to that person to, to have an honesty and purpose about themselves and say, Luke, I can't, I can't help you. I'm, I'm so wrapped up in my stress that I really can't help you. And rather than, and I know it's easy said than done, but rather than that person then say, go away, I don't want to help you, and I, I'm dealing with my own stuff, and then the pe two people contract and get into an argument about it, again, it's all about having that honesty of purpose. I can't, I can't help you today. I'm, I'm really feeling really low today. I'm really feeling anxious. I'm feeling whatever emotion you, you're going through. Just express that to that person. But the key is, is to express it in the right way. Most people don't express it in the right way because it's gone too far. We know how we feel. We know our own mind and our own bodies. So if we're in a situation where we're not feeling too great and we're going to anticipate someone saying something to us, then we've got that power to say, I can't help you today, I'm, this is how I'm feeling, before it gets into a, a stage of where everybody's just contracting against each other. Alice has mentioned the feelings and emotions we have are the result of our thoughts. If we can reframe them, then it can help. Spot on, Alice. Spot on. Uh, spot on. Absolutely spot on. Thoughts become things. So the more that, so we've got to just, like I said, we've got to be conscious about how we're thinking, knowing that if our thoughts are negative, they're going to become something tangible, whether we say it verbally, whether we do something. So it's all about trying to just think about, right, is that, is that a fact that that person thinks like that about me? Is that a fact that I'm going to get this wrong? Is that a fact that this is not going to happen? Is that a fact that I won't get that job? Is that a fact that, you know, I'll never, I'll never get through my recovery stage? Is that a fact? So the more we think like that, that it's, it is a fact, it's not going to happen. And so we are creating our own feelings, negative feelings, as opposed to changing that mindset to think, I'm trying, I'm giving it a go. Look at the switch, look at the difference of the switch in the, the conversation. So yeah, thoughts become things. We become what we think about most of the time. So if we're in an anxious state, we're thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, that's what's going to show up. So in the context of stress, if, 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 if a person said, oh, the stress, that's just me, I'm always stressed, then we've got to think, wow, that person doesn't realise what they're saying to themselves, because they're actually now they're going to become that. So it's about changing the narrative, changing the way we think about ourselves. Yeah, I might be stressed at this moment in time, but I'm doing something about it. That would be better to say that. I'm feeling a bit anxious, but I'm going to do something about it situation isn't the way I want it to be at this moment in time and it's causing me stress but I'm going to do something about it as opposed to this is me this is all I've got and that's all we will get we keep continuing to on as well unfortunately okay we're down to our last two minutes ladies and gentlemen so if you've got any more questions keep them coming I just want to make you aware that next week's session um, is all about plant identification and that's held at the allotment with Miles so I'll tune in for that um, incidentally you can watch any of our previous vlogs and Facebook live if you go onto our website and check that out there you can see them on there as well um, but it's been great speaking to you and hope uh, the information that I've given has made, made sense um, thank you Jeremy for, for helping me out with this really appreciate it and thank you all um, again, we've got another minute, so if you've got another set of questions that you want to go through, please feel free. It's been really good talking to you, talking with you.
Alex just Alex has just said she wants more more sessions. Just to say as well that we will be carrying on with our vlogs, with our Facebook live sessions, uh, all of which can be found on BCHA support YouTube channel as well as on the Facebook page. But we will be continuing with our face-to-face -face classes. We'll start again from August onwards. Was it August, right? So we will be keeping you posted with start dates of our courses where what, over the next month we're making sure that everything we do is COVID secure we're putting measures in place to make sure everyone is safe to come back to our classes here at St Swithin's so uh, we'll keep you posted on that Excellent Just before we go I just want to just quickly go through the tips to combat stress again several times a day take five minutes out of your day just five minutes to follow these simple steps focus on your heart while breathing in Concentrate on the positive feeling or attitude while breathing out. Lock this new feeling in to continue to breathe in and out through your heart area. Gradually, as you become adept at this, you can choose new feelings to de-stress and it will really help you. Please give it a whirl. Some of the most important benefits of reducing your stress. So once you reduce your stress, it's going to help you to eliminate unnecessary energy drain. It's going to help you to maintain stored resiliency, which is key. Um, our impatience, irritability, anger will decrease. It's going to improve our physical and mental health. We're going to have greater access to intuition. Our memory, focus and other brain functions will improve. More energy in, during the day and restful sleep at night, which is key, which is key. Okay, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to thank you for your time. Thank you for all your questions. Really, really brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Owen.